Good day everyone, I'm Alexander Chepernoy, also known as Fushti, a co-developer of Ergo, proof of cryptocurrency, realizing the concept of programmable money. And uh, my talk would be about property rights in the age of programmable money. And uh, the talk uh, will uh, connect some dots. In particular, it will connect uh, previously US sanctioned smart contract so uh, autonomous code on blockchain which got sanctioned uh, money of the future so programmable money tokenized real world and blockchain assets such as uh, art objects and uh, property rights and if we are talking about property rights of the future so programmable property rights as well okay so let's start so uh, what could be a property when uh, we are talking about digital world, uh, blockchain world, where we can have uh, autonomous uh, code while handling uh, some money, some tokens. So um, there was a very interesting case recently, a case of Tornado Cash. Uh, Tornado Cash uh, is a service that is mixing potentially uh, identifiable cryptocurrency funds with others. Uh, to obscure the trail back to the fund's original source. This is a privacy tool used in Ethereum and uh, Ethereum-like networks where all the transactions are public by default. And at some point, uh, the US Department of the Treasury blacklisted the protocol. Uh, and then uh, very recently, on November 26th, 2024, a U.S. federal appeals court overturned an earlier ruling stating that the law could not sanction a protocol. And, uh, well, if we are talking about details, so exact words are that uh, Tornado cash immutable smart contracts, the lines of privacy enabling software code, are not the property of a foreign national or entity, uh, meaning that so they cannot be blocked uh, under uh, yeah, different regulations. Uh, all right, so uh, here uh, we have that um, if uh, some code is not associated, uh, uh, so some code uh, along with its assets, right, such as uh, assets uh, been mixed uh, by Tornado Cash. Uh, autonomous smart contract uh, so well both the code and uh, the uh, assets uh, it's uh, owning in the process of mixing uh, not recognized as uh, someone's uh, so individual or company property okay uh, at least according to current US laws, but uh, probably in other uh, jurisdictions uh, it would be the same, but uh, yeah, it's the very new thing, you know, uh, it's uh, just a few days, uh, basically, like two weeks in uh, just one jurisdiction. Uh, okay, and uh, well, uh, the same uh, result we got uh, well, uh, the, the same results uh, may be um, uh, in, in a bit more technical form because we are not lawyers, we are developers. Uh, well, developing the concept of programmable money. Uh, so, you know, in our uh, physical uh, real world, so, uh, well, every uh, banknote is uh, not protecting itself, right? So it's passive. and. Um, in a digital uh, world, so in the setting of programmable money, every digital banknote is protected by a public key or many uh, keys and uh, also potentially programmable logic, right? So uh, every uh, digital banknote is protecting itself with some program and execution of that program, possibly with a signature check after, decides whether a note uh, may be spent or not. Okay, and uh, this is actually already quite old concept uh, going from uh, Bitcoin, uh, early days of Bitcoin, even uh, Bitcoin script, but uh, developed in the uh, Ergo uh, community. 
after. And so uh, in case of uh, blockchain uh, based programmable money like Ergo or Bitcoin, uh, uh, we have programmable logic expressed against the state of uh, the blockchain, right? Because uh, on the blockchain, everything you know is just uh, the state of the blockchain uh, to uh, be connected to the external world you need for trusted entities and uh, the whole point of uh, the blockchain is to avoid trust. Uh, but uh, we can imagine non-blockchain based programmable money also uh, where logic is expressed against state every user of a money system agreed or enforced to uh, be agreed on uh, example of that uh, could be uh, CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency, but uh, I'm not aware of any uh, using uh, such programmability at the moment. But uh, in the future, that uh, would be the case probably. And then uh, in the age of programmable money, uh, the talk about ownership is uh, becoming more complex. So we have uh, individual ownership when a, a digital banknote belongs to just one key always right dependless on time and uh, other uh, things uh, which are happening uh, on the uh, blockchain uh, we also may have cooperative property when a node belongs to multiple keys uh, for example with uh, quorum voting needed to uh, spend a note uh, and also uh, we may have uh, contractual property rights or autonomous uh, property, uh, property which belong to autonomous contracts such as uh, Tornado Cash in uh, uh, the example I've provided before. Uh, so uh, we can define contractual uh, ownership when an owner could not be uh, defined, right? Uh, when uh, th there is no owner, for example, right? So owner could be uh, pseudo randomly chosen, uh, maybe in future, or maybe we have rotating uh, right to do uh, some things uh, based on randomness, pseudo randomness, if we are talking about blockchain. Or maybe um, an owner uh, will be uh, decide will be decided based on uh, uh, the state of uh, blockchain, right? Uh, in future, uh, so uh, maybe uh, it, it will go to a miner of particular block uh, on the blockchain or whatever, right? That could be uh, very uh, different options here and uh, yeah in this case when uh, we cannot uh, identify owner because well it will be uh, decided by a program at certain point uh, or, or th there is no any owner at all uh, then we are talking about contractual property right uh those things uh may be a bit abstract right uh, for you guys so let's talk about art now let's talk about things uh, which are uh, closer to you guys uh let's talk about tokenized art so uh, what people are now doing with uh, art and uh, blockchain so there are uh, two options so uh, first uh, you may tokenize uh, physical art ownership uh, usually uh, by uh, dividing uh, ownership uh, rights and pieces right and uh, issuing uh, tokens where one token is uh, corresponding to one piece uh, of an art object and then uh, yeah, we, we have uh, tokenized uh, ownership with, uh, for example, 1000 uh, tokens uh, representing uh, the full uh, ownership, our uh, some art object. Uh, another op option is to uh, create uh, digital art and uh, put it on the uh, blockchain. Uh, you can uh, break it into pieces as well but uh, in this case uh, it's more popular to make an nft so a single token which is associated with uh, for example this uh, black swan picture
gotcha. All right. And uh, this is just one uh, dimension of ownership, right? Uh, let's call it quantization dimension. So you can have a single token representing the whole art object, or you may have uh, multiple tokens each representing part of a digital or physical art object okay but uh, then uh, well going back to programmable money uh, there is another dimension so uh, every token uh, whether it's uh, nft or one token out of uh, 1000 uh, can be protected by a public key or many keys so even programmable logic right and uh, similar to programmable uh, money program execution uh, with possible signature check after decides uh, whether a token uh, may be transferred from uh, existing owner to a new one or not okay and uh, here we have, uh, well, options uh, we've already uh, defined, so individual, collective, and uh, contractual ownership. But in case of multiple tokens representing uh, an uh, art object, for example, there could be different options for different uh, pieces, right, uh, of an art object uh, means uh, different tokens. Uh, for example, we uh, can imagine uh, 200 tokens out of uh, 1000 to be owned by an art gallery, uh, 100 uh, tokens by uh, uh, painters uh, cooperative, for example, with uh, 9 out of uh, 15 uh, signature needed for transfer, right? So uh, we have 15 uh signature uh, signatures uh, in the cooperative and then nine is enough uh, for transfer nine signatures uh and then uh we uh, can lock uh, 700 remaining tokens uh, to a contract uh, which puts uh, one token every week for example on a uh, decentralized uh, blockchain based auction right and for those uh, 700 tokens at the beginning uh, we have uh, contractual ownership right uh, but then, uh, yeah, after auctions, uh, those 700 tokens uh, would be possessed uh, by uh, uh, other entities, right? And uh, they, they could be individual, collective, or contractual again. Right, so, uh, well, uh, this uh, world uh, uh, is going to be uh, quite complicated, right? And also exciting because with uh, contractual ownership we also have contractual possibilities uh, we may do a lot of experiments uh, around uh, sales of art objects right uh, i think uh, even from uh, this simple example uh, this is uh, becoming quite obvious uh, and so we may discover a lot of new uh, sales models uh, we, we can have uh, trading uh, boosting uh, by uh, liquidity uh, provision, uh, right? Which can be uh, made a part of uh, emission contract, for example. So in this uh, example, uh, where we are selling uh, 700 uh, tokens one by one every week, we are uh, decentralized uh, blockchain-based auction. Uh, we uh, may require proceedings uh, from auction uh, to be uh, going to uh, liquidity pool, uh, right? Uh, so uh, then uh, the, the, those tokens uh, would have uh, good liquidity, right? In a liquidity pool uh, where we have uh, tokens. Uh, representing uh, art objects uh, along with uh, uh, tokens representing uh, euro for example right or uh, usd or uh, gold or uh, cryptocurrency tokens such as ergo or whatever 
Okay, uh, then uh, we can uh, have uh, time locks, for example, to prevent immediate sales where it's needed, uh, where it makes sense contractually and so on. And uh, well, by uh, doing all those uh, new things and by combining them uh, differently, uh, we are bringing a uh, financialization of art uh, to a completely new level, uh, making financial uh, schemes around uh, uh, such financialization also a kind of art. All right. And there are uh, a lot of tools already available in the Ergo ecosystem, uh, such as uh, airdrop tools to reward some community with uh, tokens. Auction coin framework to emit tokens so via auctions periodically, as in our uh, example, and uh, possibly inject uh, funds raised into liquidity pools. Then there are a lot of uh, fundraising uh, tools such as Mu Fund, where can you can uh, fundraise, uh, you can raise funds to do a new art object, right? And after tokenizing it, you can reward, uh, well, uh, contributors with uh, tokens. Uh, there are auctions uh, where you can put NFTs. There are already a lot of NFTs there. Uh, there is some, uh, tooling uh, decentralized autonomous organization it's called but uh, we can uh, call it just digital cooperatives uh, and uh, this tooling is for token based uh, decision making uh, there is such tool Pydea on Ergo and uh, you can use it uh, uh, for example to have some uh, kind of cooperative right so associated with some art object for example or you can uh, tokenize uh, maybe some collection or even some uh, movement art movement and so on uh, you may have liquidity pools order book based decentralized exchanges and so on so on uh, you may have nft collections so combine uh, different uh, uh, unique uh, pieces like this uh, black swan along with uh, white swan for example and uh, maybe pink flamingo and so on into a single collection with uh, some common properties and so on so on so on so uh, there are a lot of tools already and uh, a lot of possibilities outlined in this talk and uh, not only so uh, let's discover uh, the uh, new age of uh, finance together and uh, i hope uh, well uh with uh, all those uh, new schemes uh, there would be a lot of experiments on uh, how to uh, tokenize art to build also sustainable finance right for uh, well, artists uh, at least, but not only. Okay, so uh, please uh, check uh, the links where you can find uh, tooling mentioned. Uh, and uh, here is uh, Ergo's uh, Telegram group and uh, my personal Twitter. Uh, thank you for your attention. Have a great event. Bye.